Hey everyone! Welcome to my latest iPad. I've been really inspired by all the wonderful work that Unplay the Thing has been doing with the Dark Souls series, so I thought I'd try it out for myself. Anyway, let's play Dark Souls. I'm just kidding with you, we're gonna play Three Dirty Dwarves! So the good people who brought you Echo the Dolphin, that's Appaloosa Interactive, got hit by the 90s bug, watched too much Ren and Stimpy and Beavis and Butthead, and thought, hey, let's do that! They probably had dreams of merchandise, their starry little desperate eyes. But alas, this game is more fun to watch than play. So I'm playing it for you, and you can go watch Netflix or whatever it is you do when you run an LP in the background. There are, in fact, three playable characters. The titular Three Dirty Dwarves. Greg is the leader. He wields the mighty clue bat and its vaunted balls of wisdom. Taconic is his second in command. He wields the bowling ball of justice and the pins of extreme smackdowns. And finally, there's Korthog. He's the, uh, 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 well, he's there and he has a shotgun, so that's all that matters, right? Now, there's two versions of this game. The one on the PC was released in 1996, and the Sega Saturn version was released in 1997. I'm playing the Saturn version because, you know, fuck yeah, Sega Saturn! Anyhow, who are the three dirty dwarves? Perhaps we should let the game explain it. Middle Earth, a path in the forest heading north. You must find the gate. A hidden path, take it? Yeah! Take it! It's dark, dank. There's a tree. A really big tree. Climb it or go around? Climb it! Who's gonna climb it? Hold it! You! Up the tree! Gateway? Gateway! My turn! There! Orc attack from the bushes! Go get him! Hey, where's your sword? They must find a gate to this world. Here, it looks like this. Nothing but trouble! Underage egg heads just won't cooperate. What am I gonna do? Marty! I wanted super soldiers, not a bunch of little Einsteins! Don't talk, listen! These pint-sized supermines spend all their time in that stupid game of chance. You understand me, son? Yes, sir. Not you, you idiot! Damn! I've had it! Call the Secretary of Defense! I'm splitting up the rug rack! And order me a pizza! Go in, Chobies! Up. 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 Down, 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 down. Hmm. This is the gate that we've been looking for. Now we must pound the earth. Oh no! Oh! Oh no! Get a hold of yourself! Throw it! Oh. Let go! Pick it up! Yes, sir! Billy, throw it! Throw the die! You're going through there? Uh -uh. I'm not 
are going through there. Maybe we should go through there. This place. Fate has smiled upon us. Weapons there for the taking. We will equip and armor ourselves for battles to come. Helmets. Clubs. We will save these children. Do you think we should freshen up a little bit before we go? No. No time for that. Hmm. Hmm. Metal stick. What happens if I pull on this? <laughs> So the three dirty dwarves may or may not be figments of the kids' imaginations, but they've been pulled into the real world and are on a quest to save them. As you can see here, they're mean, one is green, and they ain't gonna take no guff from nobody. This is a beat-em-up, but it's a rather odd one, as you're about to see. As shown in the introduction, the three dirty dwarves landed in the Bronx, and now they're off to save the children. I'll start by showing them off. Here's Greg. Greg has got his bat. He can swing the bat to just hit enemies straight up. And here's Taconic. His melee weapon is a bowling pin, but he can throw bowling balls as well. And here's Korthog. He can hit enemies with his shotgun, or he can just straight up shoot them with it. Greg is the best ranged fighter. He can fire several baseballs at enemies from across the screen, just like that. And those are their base attacks. Everybody has one melee and one distance attack. Korthog and his shotgun is the best close range attack, as he can one-shot enemies with it. But Greg is no slouch. Now you can see one of the key features of this game is that the backgrounds are interactive. There's an enemy in that building over there who's throwing things at our heroes. If all three of your dwarves get knocked out, it's game over. Fortunately, all you have to do is hit them with your melee attack, and they'll get right back up again. Oh dear, we just lost our entire party. Well, that was just an example of how you play. Let's do it for real. Notice that the orcs come down as fiery meteors. They're going through the same portal that the three dirty dwarves did, and plummeting through the sky and the atmosphere, just like they did. Suppose they should have shut that portal before they came into this world, but not much they can do about it at this point. Now this time, we'll take care of that enemy in the background. Whoops, we lost Greg. And we just lost Porthog. We're not able to scroll back. This game actually has a little bit of a hidden checkpoint system. So if you lose a dwarf, you can't go back to get them immediately. And now Greg's back, and we got a 20-sided die that provides us with three of those red icons up at the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Each one of those will let us do a special attack. I'll get to those in a bit. Now every time you lose one of your dwarves, you also lose one of your special attacks up top. So there's no way to avoid those hands coming out of the grates there. You just have to walk around them to avoid them. If you walk into those radioactive fire cans, you'll also knock one of your heroes out. Now we're stuck in a little checkpoint area, and we gotta kill all the enemies before we can go on. Come over here, come over here, there you go! You switch between the dwarves using the left and right triggers on the Saturn control pad. And now you see the rats. The rats are just annoying. They don't kill you, but they make it so that you have to knock them off before you can actually do anything. Oops! 
Looks like our dwarven friends hit those electric cables. Now ah, they're back. Get back here, Greg. So, slight puzzle bits. Down here, there's a switch that'll help us get those electrical cables de-electrified. And now we jump back out. Oh, those rats are really hard to hit. Everybody get up. There we go. And another 20-sided die. And we've used Korthog's special ability, which is to form a giant dwarf that can shoot everybody in front of you. And we completely missed that orc, so that was a really good use of our special attacks. Just checking down here, making sure there's nothing below. Nope. Onward we go! Get up, Korthog. There's another enemy in the background throwing junk at us. Everything but the kitchen sink, but we got it. Get up, Taconic. I absolutely hate those sewer monsters. They can wipe out your party in no time at all. They even take multiple shotgun hits in order to destroy. That creaking's annoying. We can deal with it, though. There we go. And we just lost that 20-sided die. They disappear fast if you don't pick up the power-ups. Coming? Coming? I thought so. See, it's really dangerous to get the orcs close to you. That's why it really makes sense to take them out from afar. There we go. Yeah, I prefer to bait the enemies and coming right up to them. Now it's Greg's special attack when he jumps up and spins around like that. Nope. Don't be throwing those at us. And we need to go down that manhole, so we'll just knock that truck out of the way. Rawr! Get up, get up, get up. As I said, I hate those things in the sewers. Go away. And our allies just jumped down the hole for no reason. But here they come back. And we actually hit somebody with our special attack this time. We got Greg back, even though he was off screen for a little while. The game actually is forgiving in that way. Get back up, Taconic. Get up, everybody. There's work to be done. the Bronx was always like this, or if it just happens to be this crappy because of all the orcs raining down on it. I suspect the former. Because, after all, this is a 90s EXTREME cartoon! And we'll just turn that switch off. Get that rat, get that rat. Oh well. Nope. Same place we've already been. Come on, come here. Yeah, if you're not gonna come here, you get the shotgun. And now we will leave the Bronx! Where do we go now? He got directions? He does, huh? 
get that. Uh oh. This is the map that will guide us. To save the children, we must travel north. Here is our next target. So our next target is the pit bully at the dump. As you can see, this enemy is covered in dogs and will throw them at us. We've also used the Saturn's amazing Mode 7 capabilities in order to walk around this enemy in a complete circle while avoiding the refuse that has been left around. Now one thing you'll notice is that it's really easy for the dogs to overwhelm you. I'm spending a good chunk of my time just meleeing my fallen comrades. It's really important to keep everybody in the game because you can be wiped out just like that. So we'll take this fight slow. One problem with that though is that we can't actually see the enemy's health bar. So we just have to hope and pray. So basically it's a pattern. Keep your people alive, wait for an opening, hit the enemy. Now you notice Greg has just been grabbed by one of the dogs. He's gonna get taken off screen and we won't be able to bring him back for a little while. That's one of the big dangers of this boss. Car dogs on the scene with his shotgun. And now we finally got Greg back. But we lost Korthog again. Got him. We defeated the pit bully. Onward we go. Well, that's it for now. Thank you, everybody, for watching I Played a Thing, Three Dirty Dwarves. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.